Hello and welcome back to The Crossover with Joe R. Lucas. Always a pleasure to bring you these very special inter interviews that take us all over the world. Today, it's a trip back to Greece with a few stops along the way and then back again to Greece. My next guest is about as versatile as they come on the floor. A guy that can play various positions, take you inside, score all day. Very capable of dropping threes right in your face. A career 37% three-point shooter, but knocked down more than 50% back in 2012-2013. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the crossover. A guy that has the most young player, newcomer, rising star awards that I've ever seen in my life. Kostas, Papa Nicolau. How are you, Hi. my man? Ticanis. How you doing, my man? Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure for me to be here. Uh, you make a great fashion with this crossover. Uh, podcasts and it's really a pleasure for me to be here yeah it's nice man because we used to have to fight to get you guys to come and sit down for an hour with me now you know, now some of you guys want to do it so we appreciate right. your time also you know <laughs> we know you have family you have everything going on we want to make sure your family's fine everybody's fine during this coronavirus yeah everybody's great you know and thank god no problems everybody's healthy and you know we just gotta be careful everybody and we're gonna go through it now, now we're doing this interview in the morning, which is, you know, probably more difficult for you than it is for me. I'm 55. So I'm, you know, like seven o'clock, my body's waking me up, but we're doing it because you have a, an appointment that I think you forgot about when we originally scheduled. And it's a very important appointment about your wife being pregnant. It's a doctor's appointment. You can't forget about those appointments as no, a husband, man. Being honest, I, I didn't forget it. Uh, it wasn't scheduled yet. Ah, okay. and then and then my wife scheduled it behind my back without me knowing, without asking me, you know. So I had to support my wife and uh, be there with with her, you know. So that's why, and I apologize for all these uh, no, I, I, problems I think a, that might cause. I, I think a pregnant wife takes precedence over the crossover. That's <laughs> right. That's one of the things we'll allow you to do. You know, we adapt quickly. We got to thank my, all the guys that you already met here before we started over at ING for being able to 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 make sure that you didn't miss that appointment so that your wife wouldn't talk to you for three days. I don't know how that goes, but <laughs> is this your first kid? Yeah, first kid, first kid. And I'm really excited. I can't wait. Uh, you're, not, you're not nervous, are you? Isn't like nervous no, excitement? Um, not so far. I mean, but I don't know when the due day is, how I'm going to feel, you know, when right. we come to life, you know, because, you know, for for guys, for men, is. It's a little bit later that they they of get course. the clue, you know, because the but, wife has the, all the process all these months and she can <laughs> she gets she gets ready, but the man just goes one day to the hospital and comes out with a baby and he's freaking <laughs> out, you know. Hey, hey, I always used to say that that like we go out and play basketball and you and you, know, you said you're injured now and and you're going through all these trials and tribulations of playing, but thank God that we didn't have to carry the baby for nine months and deliver. I don't think we can do it. From what I see, thank God. I mean, God, <laughs> for a reason, make women so strong, you know, that they can yeah. hold all this process and go through it. When, when is the due date? Uh, they gave us end of uh, March. Okay. And it's end of March, beginning of April, you know, so we are almost there. All right. Now, my question is, you're not going to try to take after one of your teammates, are you? And have like 46 kids, right? No. Nah. I mean, I mean Listen, Bill, what's up it, with Billy? How many kids if does it he comes, have now? If it comes with the success he had for any kid he made, <laughs> then I might think about it, you know? I, I interviewed him for this show a couple of years ago here in Madrid. And uh, and he said, he said, no, I'm done. I think it was his fourth kid or maybe his fifth. I don't even know. I don't know how many he has now. And I said... He's at six said, now. He has six. Yeah, yeah, I said, I said to him, I said, is that it? He's like, I'm done, Joe. He's like, I'm done. I promise I'm done. And then like two <laughs> weeks later, I see his Instagram account that his wife's pregnant again. Right. My, my question is, the guy, from what I understand, practices all the time. He's one of the hardest workers there is. You guys travel all the time. How do how do how, how you find the time? Yeah, they have five <laughs> kids also. So how do they have five, five times? To give it, I don't to, know. to actually create, to, to make children for Christmas. I can't get it. I can't figure it out. I don't know, man. This guy has a lot of secrets of success, you know, and <laughs> in various parts, you know. That's so crazy. maybe I, that's one more. I don't know. His wife must love being a, a mom. But you, talk about your family. You were brought up. I, I talked to so many players that, that were brought up within like sports families, basketball families. 
Um, you were um, brought up a little bit outside of Saloniki. Your dad yeah. was a cop. Right. And your mom, oh, yeah. your mom had what I what I always feel as though is the hardest job in the world. And that's a stay at home mom with a couple of kids. You know, that's that's the exactly. hardest job in the world. Exactly. Exactly. Where, where did you where did you get the, the basketball thing from? Because you were you were actually a volleyball player at first, right? Right. I started playing volleyball when I was uh, in fifth grade. Then uh, uh, basketball camp opened up in my city, Gravena, Gravena, like we say in Greece, that I grew up. Then uh, all of my friends and I, we decided to go there and give it a shot, you know, just go for fun and be all mm. together and just play and stuff. And day by day, weeks by weeks, month by month, I saw that uh, basketball fits more to my personality, to, to how I feel about the sport, you know, and how I am um, involved in the sport. Right. And uh, it was that moment that uh, my coach is there and also my father told me that I have to take a decision, that I cannot be playing both volleyball and basketball. I have to make a decision, you know, and choose one of it. And uh, thank God for me, I chose basketball over <laughs> both volleyball because it turned out very well for me. Sometimes sometimes fathers, they, they know what they're talking about, you know? I mean, right, right. my kids always look back at me. They're like, you know, you, why, you know, why'd you tell me this? Why'd you tell me that? I'm like, eh, we know what we're talking about somewhere along the line. Listen, I, I, I got to tell you, man, nothing, none of this will happen without my, my father and my mother and yeah. also my brother's support, you know, because they really support me. My father was getting in the car, driving me all the way, all across Greece, you know, to get into camps and everything, uh, sleeping in the car and waiting yeah. for me, you know, all this kind of stuff that dads do and they never get credit for it you know then they don't even expect to get credit for it they do it from from their heart you know and yeah. also my mother you know they they gave up their life to follow me to to thessaloniki you know and just give me a shot for my dreams you know and because they, nobody told them at that moment that everything will work out and will be right. where we are today so every chance i have i i give them a, a big applause and i thank them from the bottom of my heart you know that, that that's probably one of the nicest things I've heard on this on this show because um, parents do not get enough credit sometimes for for just the the time that they they spend and because no one really sees nobody sees everything that they actually give up to have to make sure that your dreams come true so it, it's right. a very special thing and gr growing up next to Saloniki you which is one of my favorite cities in Madrid or in, in, in Greece, of course. I just absolutely love that place. Who is your favorite team? I mean, you're, I mean you, you're fighting between Pauk and Artis, but you spend most of your life in Olympiacos. Who is your favorite team growing up? Uh, I shouldn't say that now, but uh, <laughs> you I, used have to. To, <laughs> I, used to, I used to support Artis. Artis. Uh, yes, very much. Um, but you know, once once you get in the in the business, if I can say, yeah. uh, you stop seeing everything. You know, you gotta be more professional. Uh, of course, you have your you like some some teams more than others. You know, but you gotta be professional. You gotta do uh, your job. And of course, here in Olympiacos, being here for ten years now, the bond is very strong. You know, and it's hard not to like the team that you consider as your family, you know, for so many years. You know, a, a lot of the young guys that might be, or young people, I should say, that are listening to this, that will listen to this, they don't realize that Pau Canaris was maybe even more of a rivalry than Panathinaikos Olympiacos was back in the 80s yeah. and the 90s. I right. mean, it was... It was, it was crazy. Some of the most amazing games, it was, it was some of the most amazing places I've ever played in my life was up in, in, in Thessaloniki. I mean, it's just an incredible rivalry up there. I had the, the opportunity to, and I was lucky that I saw uh, some great moments, you know, of Aris, you know, new, new past, you know, if I can say not Gallis and everything, but the, the years 2006, 2005 that they were in EuroLeague. Mm -hmm. And uh, the gym was full and, you know, the atmosphere was, was, I mean, it was crazy. One of the best atmospheres I've ever seen, you know, uh, easily I could compare it to, to great atmospheres from all around Europe, from great arenas like Maccabi, like uh, yeah. Zalgiris, you know, like a pure basketball atmosphere, you know, and great environment to, to play, you know. I mean, just, just 
a, a, for me, an indication of what <clears throat> artist is all about is, is at the end of my career, I went and played for, I think, four months there. And, and it was, it was a difficult time. The team was, we were in, you know, towards the last place we ended up getting making it to the playoffs. Um, and it was a great year, but, but I spent four months there, Costas, four months and they still treat me like I'm family. You know, the, right. the, the, it's like, it's like I spent my whole life there. You know, I get messages from them on Twitter. Um, they send me pictures all the time and, 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 it, it's just a special place, man. And, and you got to play there. I mean, this was your team growing up. And then yeah, all of a sudden yeah. you show up and you play there. What, what's it like to have that? I mean, I don't know. Was that your dream? At one point, when did it become your dream to play for Ardis? Well, I, I mean, first of all, I didn't even expect it, you know, like uh, start playing basketball. Oh, everybody has dreams, you know, but yeah. you never, you never, you know, too sure that you're going to make any of those. Um, <laughs> uh, so for me, like when uh, it was the summer of 2005, if I'm not mistaken, that I had some offers, you know, from various teams in Greece to go and make a practice, you know, to, to, to see me and how I work out, how everything, you know, and to see if they want to take me in. And one of the teams was Aris. And it was, uh, I was so nervous, you know, going there, going on a court. But yeah, because... It's not only that I went for practice, it's like Andrea Machon, that was the coach at the time of the team, came over, you know, to watch the practice. Ryan Stack uh, just walked through the the door one, at one moment, you know, to watch the practice, you know. For me, it was like guys that I was seeing on TV and I was admiring, you know, like, and then they were right there standing on the door or standing on the stands watching, you know, and the ner I was so nervous. I think I was, that was one of the most, uh, I don't know, bad, if I could say, practices. I don't know what they <laughs> saw to me a bad day, you know, but I was so nervous. But, you know, then when they called me and they said, okay, you got to come if you want to, you can come and watch a game, you know, uh, that we have on a playoff. They were playing at, with Marusi at home at the time. Say you can come over and watch a game if you want. It was the first time I walked into a court, you know, a basketball court, like, that crowded and everything, you know, I was, I was, my, I was blown away, you know, like watching around my, so that, that was I, the I was moment speechless. for you then, that was the moment. Right. That, yes. Like, yes. This is what I want to do. Living, living, living the, living the, the court, uh, say to my father, okay, this is where I want to go. You know, this is where I want to come. I want to come here. I want to play here, you know, and I want to give it a shot. That, that, we're going to get through this through the interview, but that was probably one of the only moments. It was probably only one, one of the only big moments when you were nervous and you didn't perform well because the rest of the time you did. And we'll talk about that a little later. You didn't play that much the first year in artist, but somehow or another, you got into some kind of youth all-star game. Well, I mean, yeah. what was what was there only like ten youth players that you had, you had to play or what? Because you didn't play that much for an artist. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at that moment. Uh... In general, in Greek league, you know, you didn't get the chance to see a lot of young players, you know, to, to play. Um, but uh, they had to make an all-star game and they had to have some, some young players, you know, also there for the uh, rising star, I guess, sophomore, if I can say, you know, right, right, okay. game. So this is what, uh, so they start bringing in kids, you know, from all the big teams, you know, and everything just to, to make two teams and play throughout Saturday because Sunday was the main event with the main all-star and everything. That was the, the chance for us, you know, to to play and to in front of crowd and for people to see us for first time, you know. That, and, and then and, and that that's one of the, the first situation we'll talk about is you took advantage of that. You ended up winning the MVP in that tournament in that game. Right. Ah, oh, you did your research. You did your research. I mean, you well, know. I do my research, but I got guys that you talk to before who do a lot of research for me also. So this is, you know, just like when you guys win titles, it's not one player, it's a team. True, this, true. That's true. When this crossover comes out, it's a, it's a team effort without a doubt. So they've done a lot of research for me. Right. But you also, then, uh, you did the same thing. And I mean, it didn't seem like you were that that well known of a player you were you were probably well known in in local areas and certain parts but then you went to the U18 team 
and you went to the, the U20 That's... team and, and you won both of those European championships. And, and, and I think it was a U20 that you got the MVP also. Yes. And again, yes. we're starting this trend where you just show up in, in the most important moments. That it, is that, was that the moment where, where you develop the con I always talk about confidence. You can't play this game without confidence. It's impossible. Right. I mean, you could have as much passion as you want. You could have as much desire as you want. But if you don't have self-confidence, you're not going to get anywhere. Is yeah, that way you kind of seven. developed it? Well, to be honest with you, I like you said, uh, in U16, I was kicked out from the team. That, um, uh, that uh, upset me a lot, like made me sad a lot and gave me a purpose, you know, to keep working hard for the next year to come, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that was the moment that I, I realized that I gotta work hard, you know, if I, if I wanna make something and if I wanna have a success on something, you know, in, according to basketball. Uh, because like you said, I wasn't the most talented player uh, in my age, you know, and everything. There were, there were guys much more talented than me uh, and well-known all over Greece and some of them all over Europe too. Um, so yes, that year for me was the, was the year that I sat down, I worked hard and in U18, I wasn't ready yet, but I believe the next year, uh, in the U19 World Championship and U20, uh, European Championship in, uh, in Rhodes, I was, that was the turning point for me. How many, <clears throat> I love the fact of what you said a lot, uh, you know, everything that happened along the way. How many players, is? I've always thought about this in my life, and how lucky I feel like I've been. How many players along the way did you grow up with playing that were your age, a little bit older, a little bit younger, that never made it, <clears throat> that didn't make it as far as you did, that you look at like, man, I can't believe that I made it and he didn't. <laughs> how many no, of them? There's a bunch, aren't there? there? There's a lot. There's a lot of guys. And, you know, I always say this to the kids, you know, it's not only... It's not only what you do, you need some luck also, you know? Yeah. And for me, luck is a big factor, you know, of our life and how things will turn out. Uh, this is when I go to, to talk to, to some kids, I say, you just guys got to do work and do the best you can from your perspective. From there on, there is other things and other factors that they, they, come, they might come into, you, into your life, into your career, mm -hmm. into everything, you know? It doesn't mean that you are not worth it, but... You know, it's still part of the life. I was in the lucky side, you know, of, of life because yeah. I can tell you this. I, I could come to Olympiacos that year that I came, that coach Yanaki chose me to come here. And um, instead of coach Sivkovic uh, that came along after him and made me play, you know, it could be some other coach that uh, he didn't trust young, right. young players. And I never play. I never step on the court and it would be a totally different situation. You would not be here, of course, talking with me. It's, 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 it's amazing, isn't it? The, the, right. The, 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 the fact that so many different factors can change the, the journey that a, a player has. And, and, you, and you, like I look back and I see so many guys that I played in college basketball with that are like, they were so much better than me. And they just didn't get the opportunities that I had. But now, but now you're in Olympiacos. But was there, there had to be a point because now you're MVP of these tournaments. You win in tournaments for your country, which is even more special sometimes. And there had to be a point where you're, you're either red or green. I mean, I'm sure they were both talking to you. Yeah, they were both. They, they were both. Uh, why red? Uh, I'll tell you why. Because at the time, I felt like Olympiacos was the right team for me to to have the opportunity um, to play. And I will give you examples for that. I mean, Panathinaikos at that time, 2009, had strong teams, you know. Yeah. You couldn't see a lot of young players playing there, you know. Right. Olympiacos, on the other hand, with coach Giannakis, had Panagiotis Vasilopoulos, that he was young, you know, and he was... He was like 25, I think, mm -hmm. uh, 23 maybe, not even 25. And he was playing, they had Borussis that he was young and he was playing. So, and it was a lot of young players, you know, all around the team. Like Slukas had come the year before that we were the same age, you know. And I said, look, Olympiakos is trying to do something with the young players. Maybe they, they, they have something in mind, you know. Maybe right. they want to give a, a shot. And I thought that if I had... 
if I had one chance and one shot, that would be with Olympiacos. That's why I chose Olympiacos. And I think I did the right thing. Yeah, yeah well, I think so too. <laughs> Maybe if you chose Pan of the Night, because you wouldn't be on my show today. Right. <laughs> But but what I like about what I like about the 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 research that I did is you started in 2009. You played six games. You scored five points the entire season. 2010, you went 16 games and you scored like 3.9 points per game. 2011, you went 22 games and you scored 6.1 points per game. In 2012, you went 31 games and 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 scored 8.7 points a game. It was it it was just the it was the continued growth that you showed on a yearly basis. Of course, these numbers don't sound crazy. You know, 3.9 points, 6.1 points. They don't sound crazy. But when you realize that you, you the, the trust that the coaches had in you on a yearly basis was because of probably the work that you put in in the summers during the season. And that's why your numbers grew so much also. Well, it's... Uh... For me, the connection between a player and a coach is back and forth, you know. Mm -hmm. The more you give him as a player, the more the coach will give you back. Because I don't believe there is a coach that he he doesn't want to have a, a good player or a player that does the job for him, you know. I don't believe there is coaches that they don't want the guys that they work and they improve the, their work and their growth, like you say, and their improvement on the court. So... For me, this is what I was trying to do. Always listen to what my coaches wanted for me, working on that and trying to, to accomplish it, you know. As long as I was doing it, I was getting the credit, you know. And that's how I, I learned to, to play the game and to learn to, to, to earn my minutes, let's say, on the court. You're tw 21 years old, all right? You're, in, you're, you're part of probably the most famous EuroLeague game in the history of of this league, uh, the the final between Olympiacos and Cheska, you guys are down 19 in the third quarter. Everybody, <clears throat> everybody knows the story. I don't want to know what it felt like to win that game. I want to know what it felt like just to be there, uh, to be a part of that final four, the weekend, um, the semifinal game, the whole atmosphere. I mean, cause everybody kind of knows, I'll ask you later, but everybody kind of knows what it would feel like for a player to win a tournament like that. No one knows unless you're a part of it, but what does it feel like just to be there at 21 years old? I mean, because everything happens so fast for you. It's a matter of six or seven years. It's crazy. I, I, I tell you, it's very hard for me to describe, to describe any of it, you know, any of it because I was really young and I, I didn't have the the experience, you know, like to comprehend what really happened. And what I mean is like for us, just winning Siena and that playoffs and going to the, going to the final four was like, okay, we're done. We did the best thing we can do. Right. That, that, that we, 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 I mean, we break every barrier that we set, you know, like according to our goals for that season. And uh, we went there, everybody was like, okay, let's just enjoy, you know, and have nothing to lose because we really didn't have nothing to lose, you know. It was a, it, it was a, it was a team with two, two, veter two veterans, I mean, Billy and Yorgos, that they were not even that old at the right, time, exactly. you know. But two experienced guys, and from there, from there on was like seven kids, and uh, two, three Americans that, they, you know, yeah, it, it's, it's the truth. You, when you talk for about a 21 and 22 years old guy, you know, you know you, what you think is a kid, you yeah, know, yeah. like, you think he's very young. And some Americans that they just trying to, to make a statement in, uh, in EuroLeague and like Kyle, like uh, Law, that it was their first seasons and they were trying to make a statement uh, uh, in the league, you know, and also Pero Andits that... Uh, uh, was trying to do his his uh, I think crazy pero uh, by the way <laughs> he's a lot of fun uh, isn't he <laughs> right he was my roommate so I know a lot no of way him. are you serious yes yes <laughs> so from us getting there to the final four it was just an experience you know like I remember myself I wanted to 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 live every moment you know to get out of it the best I can you know the most I can stepping on the court the only thing 
we didn't have in mind was like, oh, what if we lose? We just went there to play the game. We played the final. I don't, I don't even remember how I felt during the game, you know? Like, I think I was, yeah, I think I was numb. I was just numb. I was playing in the final, win Barcelona the day before. It was crazy for us, you know? Nobody Wait. expected us to do that. You, you, all right, let, 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 let's just kind of go over this. In the, in the playoff against Siena, you played all four games. You didn't play more than 20 minutes in either game. I think it was like one game you played 12. You scored 25 total points in, in that four-game playoff. I don't know this. You're telling me this. Yeah, yeah, of course. You well, say that, it's that's right. Why, that, that, that's, why I, that's why I do this job, man. That's why they gave me this job, because I do my research. <laughs> I do my work, my man. 25 points you scored in that game. In, in the final four, you scored 27. You scored nine in the first game, and you went 18 in the second game, all right? You went like up against guys like Kristic, Siskauskas, Teodosic, Kirilenko. I mean, you got these guys on the court when you're 21 years old, and you come up not only with 18 points, but you knock down two free throws with 10 seconds to go in the game, which were huge free throws to get you in that position. Dude. You scored like 30% of your team's points. You realize more than 30% of your team's points in that game. What's the deal with you showing up in the most important moments? In, in, uh, what, are you still making up for that day you went to Ardis and you, and you played bad in front of everybody? <laughs> I, hope, I surely hope so. I surely hope so. But like I told you, man, I was, I was just not thinking, just playing the game. That was the 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 more I, I believe the more relaxed I've been in a, such a crucial game, you know, maybe because of, like I told you before, I couldn't realize how crucial that game was because of my age, you know, like I had the, uh, okay, even if we lose, nothing will happen. Nobody will blame us, you know, about anything. We already did the best thing we could do. Maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe it was, um, I don't know, maybe it was our time to do something, you know, like, I don't know, I can, I can, like I told you before, I cannot find the words to explain anything about that weekend, you know, and, but I'm telling you anything, everything is, it's so hard for me, and it's not, and we talk in English, even if you tell me to explain to you in Greek, in Greek. <laughs> I don't think I could find, I could find the words, you know, to explain to you, it's, it's such a magical moment, uh, not only for me, for all the club and the history of the club, you know, what happened uh, that day is that I don't think anybody will ever, ever forget. I, you hear every time that there is the Cinderella story, it's exactly like that for me. It's exactly yeah. like that. You know, sometimes there's, there's always that battle between experience and inexperience. And, and most of the time, experience wins out. But there are times, like you said, where inexperience is, is just being dumb and being naive about things. And like, well, whatever, I'm here. I'm just going to enjoy it. And you, you don't feel the pressure. You just kind of relax and you, and you do it. Exactly. And, and now you're on the crossover with me. So I always ask like some tough questions every now and then. So I need you to be extremely, extremely honest. And I know the type of guy you I'll are. I'll do my best. And I know what you're going to say. But the MVP of that Final Four was, was my boy Vasilis. He got the MVP. Now, don't tell me that at one point or another, after that game or any time after that, even up to today, that you didn't think like, damn it, I should have got the MVP for that tournament. All right, I'm gonna be honest with you. you. You don't know how many guys came over to me all these years and told me, like from fans, from friends, from people I meet in the street, many, 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 many. Uh, it would be amazing for me to win it. I won't lie to you. It would be a great a personal accomplishment, you know, but if you put next to each other the, what the team accomplished in, and the personal accomplishment, it's like a huge difference, you know, like I don't even, I, I don't even think I would get any more credit winning the MVP for myself, you know, than winning the EuroLeague itself, you know. It wouldn't make any difference. For me, it's doesn't really doesn't really matter, you know. Like that's why I chose to play basketball. I said many times because it's a team sport. Of course, it would I would love it to win it, but there you I don't go. Mind. That's the question. That that's no, the no, no. I was looking for. <laughs> I would love it. I would love it. Who who, who wouldn't? But right. you know, 
that's a, a secondary thing, you know. The main thing is the big trophy and that's what you care about. That's what, what it's all about. That's why you're fighting, what you, why you said, sweating, bleeding, everything, you know. But, but what about, what about when, when you, you lifted the trophy, you're doing the thing, and then all of a sudden the speaker comes out and he's like, and now for the EuroLeague Final Four MVP, there wasn't that moment right there where you're like, oh, is he going to call my name? I thought it for a second. I won't lie okay, to you. Good. I thought it for a second. Good. I won't lie to you. But I wasn't disappointed. I'm no, of course, of you. course you're not disappointed because you, 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 right. you, you, you've won what you needed to win. But I'm glad right, that you exactly. said that, you, that at least you thought they were going to call I you thought win. it for a second. Call, call this, you think? I, I, I had to look up because I'm like, all right, 18 points in the biggest game of your career with 21, with 21 years old. I looked up your career high since then. You know what your career high is? Uh, 21. In, any Euro, in any EuroLeague game, I'm talking. 21 points, I think, with uh, Kinky, right? No, it was no. 22 points with Basconia. You got, oh, you got your, the other crazy game. You got your rebounding high, I think, with Kinky. Right. You, you that, I remember. Rebounding highs. Oh, that was your, yeah, your PI, PII, PIR high. Yeah, I, I don't remember that. But you got it? a career high of 22 and you scored 18 at 21 in the final game. It's, it's just, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's really an amazing story. It is, it is. And uh, I thank God, you know, that uh, gave me this, how can I say, you know, like I can, cannot find the words to express. I, I, I thank the God that blessed me, you know, to, to be able to achieve these things and the things that I've done mm -hmm. so far till today, you know. Because I know many, many, many much more greater, greater players than me, you know, that they didn't have the opportunity, you know, to win uh, a big title or something like that. And they totally deserve it. But because of some circumstances or anything, you know, they didn't have the chance. Yeah. So and I know what it means. in the right it. place at the right time also, you know. Exactly. I've, I've exactly. always felt the same way about the times that I won. I was just in the right place at the right time and, and you take advantage of it. But the next year, you guys were the last team to repeat which is the, becoming one of the most difficult things to do in basketball is repeat as a as a year league champion but the amazing thing that I, I i didn't realize until i started doing this research was it, I, and i think I've, I've even discussed this with with billy in, in our interview you guys change coaches right which, so you have you have two things really going against you one is is the fact that you guys won and the tendency the year after is like, all right, well, we won. Everybody is expecting you, you know, also right. next year, you know, everybody want to be the, the champion, especially but, a team. That but they... on top of that, you, you changed coaches, which is you changed systems, you changed mentalities because Ikovic was a great coach who gave you a lot of confidence and, 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 and really depended on you through a lot of moments. And now Bar uh, Bartzokas, Bartzokas comes in and he takes over the team. How, how does the how does the, it happen where you guys come back and win again? Because if if anybody was to bet money, seeing that you've won one year, you change your coaches, and you and you start another year, they would say there's no way that this team could possibly repeat. Uh, I think the most clever, the smartest things that the smart thing that Coach Vajokas did. He, it was like he didn't try to change everything, mm -hmm. the whole identity of the team. So what I mean, he kept a lot of stuff, you know, um, that we had from the previous year. And he added up some small details of his uh, identity, you know, and uh, what he wanted to, to do on the court. And I think uh, that was uh, the key because the team just keep working and keep going on the automatic from what they had learned. Everybody we had learned from the, the previous season, you know. So it wasn't a big uh, mix up, you know, between the systems and everything. So we just pick it up from when we left it la the last season and we just kept going. Of course, nobody believed that the outcome would be the outcome that we had in the end of the season. but. You know, like everybody had a uh, much more conf confidence and was feeling better, you know, stronger and uh, capable to do better things. You know, it's like you told before, like you said before, like confidence is the number one thing. And we've which, had that. which one, which one of those two is more unexpected? 
more unexpected for sure is the first. More difficult was the second. Because you because, because now everybody you're not, now you're not the hunter anymore. You're being the hunter. Right. Everybody yes. Everybody now was suspicious, if I can say, playing with us mm-hmm. because the first year when we played with some teams, they were like, okay, Olympiacos with the kids, you know, not so strong team, you know. But the second year, everybody had ex- they were expecting us, and they, we were seeing that, like going to play into arenas and everything. We would see, we could see to the opponents and to the fans that they really want to beat us, you know, from for what we did the year before, you know, right. like not in not with uh, hate or anything, but no, I'm not. they wanted to get, you know, like uh, something out of the 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 greatness of that this team had uh, accomplished the year before. I mean, look. Most teams, whether they're the the top teams or the or the teams or whatever teams, they always even in your in your domestic league, they always want to beat Olympiacos or Panathinaikos. They always want to beat them. But when they come in as the defending champions, they always want to beat them even more. But but that year, exactly. that year you won the 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 2013 Euro League Rising Star Award. How, I said this in my opening. How many young player rising star awards can you possibly win in one year or, or in a couple of seasons? I mean, eventually they got to say, okay, well, enough of the young guy awards. This guy's a good player. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. I just, this is something that you could put, you know, on your personal uh, list of accomplishments, you know, mm-hmm. at some point to be considered one of the leagues, the second biggest league in the world, you know, uh, most talented young player of all Europe, you know, it's it's a big accomplishment, you know, mm-hmm. it's a big accomplishment, and uh, all those things, you know, just boosts your your confidence, boosts your your um, your passion and your uh, need to work, you know, makes you wanna makes you hungry, you know, you wanna mm-hmm. you want more and more, you wanna achieve more, you wanna keep fighting, gives you gives you the, the the juice you know to keep working even harder because you see that when you work uh here come the rewards here yeah. come you know the good stuff and all that worked out perfect for me you know in uh, in the early age in the early years of my career you know the, those awards are are you know the, the trophies that you put up in your house and you know you see them now and then but they but but what they signify is the validation of all the hard work that you put in and and all the and, and that, it's not only a physical hard work; it's a mental hard work because this is it's difficult to be being yelled at by a coach all day long and being told what to do and hearing that whistle blow and having to get up and go to you know it's really difficult to to do all. It's this a lot. Thing. It's a lot. I mean, listen, I, I always say this: we we are fortunate that we just turn our hobby or something that we like into our job. Mm-hmm. We're fortunate for that. And we get paid a, a really good money for it. Mm. I mean, guys that they do their PhDs and everything, they don't, some of them, they don't even make it to make the money we make right. for just doing our hobby, you know. Uh, but also what they don't realize is what we give up from our life, you know, in yeah. order to get to that. Like for me, for instance, being a 14, 15 year old, boy, I wanted to go to the beach. I wanted to go to my village, to play with my friends and everything, to go to the sea, have vacation. I gave up everything. Uh, all how, of that. How are, you know, how are those those Friday night birthday parties when all your friends are all together, but you have a game on Saturday morning? Exactly, and you exactly. <laughs> I, gave up, I gave up everything until the age of 23, 24, until I went again for vacation. Nobody told me to do it, but mm-hmm. I wanted to do it because I had something in mind, you know, I had a goal. And that's why uh, I, I, I feel blessed, you know, that I had the opportunity to be in the right, the right mind to, to do the way th- I did things, you know, in order to be here today. Yeah, you're still, you're still a relatively young guy, but you seem like the old guy because you've been around for so long, you know what I mean? <laughs> you've been, your name's been around for so long, but isn't it, isn't it crazy that one day you're in the locker room and you're playing with all these guys and you're like and you're like the, the young kid on the team. Now all of a sudden you're 30 and you're like, hold on a second. I'm all of a sudden people are like you're looking at me like I'm the veteran on the team. Like I'm the it's, sometimes it, it hits it's, you. It's you like know? one year to another. You went from the young kid on the team to the old guy. <laughs> sometimes it hits you, you know, like and I have and it hits you really good when 
somebody come to ask for your advice, you know, a younger right. player or something, you know, and then you're like, okay, I'm old, you know, like this is what I used to do going to the older players, you know, and ask for their opinion or for their guidance yeah, or exactly. anything, you know, and now they come up to me, so something is wrong, you know. <laughs> I, I, I remember playing a game when we were, when I was in Madrid, we were playing, I can't remember who we played against, but it was like a smaller team from another country. It was like in the beginning of the European league. And two kids that played on the team came up to me at the end of the game when we were walking through the tunnel and asked me to take a picture with them. I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm not that old yet. <laughs> but that, that for me, that was the moment I was like, Oh, shit. okay. This Something is, is going this on. It's almost over for me. I got to be, I got to start enjoying this a little bit more. Uh, all right. So here's, here's, here's my tough question that everybody's going to get mad at me for saying, but it has nothing to do with Real Madrid and Barcelona. It has nothing to do with it at all because I could care less one way or the other. But why the hell, after all this success, do you pick up and leave everything that you have in, in, in Olympiacos? and go to Spain and go to Barcelona. And I don't care, if you went to Madrid, I'd still be asking you, why the hell did you go to Madrid? Uh, I mean, you're, li you're living the dream in, 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 I don't know where you live, in Bogomeni, or I don't know where you were living, but you're in that, you're, you're in that area of, of everybody knows you, everything's beautiful, everything's wonderful, you guys are winning, and you pick up and boom, you go to Barcelona. Why? Well, to be honest with you, um... I didn't really, it was a different, it was a, a peculiar situation, you know, like when the season ended, uh, Barcelona came, you know, and uh, talked with Olympiacos to requ require my rights, you know, and um, the team obviously, you know, thought that uh, this was the best moment for, for, for us to part ways, you know, it was a, that they thought they would, it would be a win-win for both of us, you know, like they would make some money, I would make some money and uh, go to another also big club, you know, and everything. Uh, for me, priority was to stay here, but uh, when the things came out like this and uh, I saw what the team wanted also, uh, I just took the, I pulled the trigger, you know, and I, I took what I had in front of me and uh, it wasn't like I was going to a bad club or something. I was going to right. Barcelona uh, and we all know what Barcelona means. Even even you being in Madrid, you know what Barcelona means and how huge they are like a, like a club, you know, and so it wasn't, it wasn't difficult for me. Of course, it was difficult that I had to leave all the, the, like you said, uh, every, everything here was settled for me. Like I, I was in my own country, everything was nice. But um, I don't know. Maybe it was the it was the time for both of us, for for the team and for me, uh, to part ways. Because deep down, I believe both of us, also me, also the the team knew that they we will meet again, you know, down the road, and uh, we will hold hands again and we, we <laughs> go together. <laughs> but you know, as, as players that are at the level that you were at at that point, there's a lot of pride that's involved with it. A lot of times we have stupid pride also. We're, we're so, we have so much pride that we're idiots, you know? I mean, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's just what happens. But there, you didn't have, I mean, you had to have some sort of hard feeling that they, that they started to want to look into moving you. I mean, obviously, you, you guys held hands again in your back, and we know the story. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. I mean, of course, of course, I was a little bit uh, bitter at the mm -hmm. beginning, because, but I, I believe that happened mostly because I was young, and I couldn't realize the, uh, that this is how things work, you know? This right. is how the, how the things are in this business, you know? Uh, I was too young to, to understand it at the time. And uh, once uh, everything happened and I sit down, I relax and I, I, I calm down and I thought everything the right way, I could see why Olympiacos did what, what did at the, mm -hmm. at the moment and what was the reason and I don't blame him. If I was the businessman, I probably would do the same thing, you know? Right. Yeah, we, we, we realize those things as we get older, not, not so much when right. we're young, but yes. you, you, in, in Barcelona, you won, the, you won the league, which I thought was, was a great accomplishment considering and again, it's not a Madrid thing. I, I keep 
stressing this point so no one gets upset or whatever, but but you played in one of the most difficult games that anybody's ever probably played in, and that was the Final Four game where you guys lost to to your bitter rival. um, It was hard. Thirty-eight points. It was. It was. It was hard. It was hard because the week before the playoff, we beat them at Palau. We beat them at Palau easy, easily, you know. And everybody was very confident, you know. Maybe th- that was our mistake, you know. That was our a little trap that we set in ourselves, you know. Uh, going to the Final Four, everybody was so confident that we're going to do well because we beat them the just previous week and everything. But Madrid really outplayed us that day. They, 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 they played great, you know. They, they dominate the game and uh, we had one, I believe, one of the worst performances that we could have at this season, you know, yeah. uh, but again, the season ended up uh, like amazing, you know, like we finished third and then it was this another memorable, you know, uh, semi-final with Valencia with five great games. Right, I remember that. Uh, yes, and then the, the the final against Madrid was also, you know, I remember Maciel Lambe in the last game in Palau made a very, very crucial three-pointer. 50 seconds to go to the game and we secured the win because it was, you know, 50-50 at the time. And, and that, that has to feel good after that Final Four loss also. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a redeem, you know, yeah. also it's a redeem, you know, for the, uh, for the fans, for the club, for everybody, you know. Did you learn any Spanish? Uh, I tell you what, by the end of the season when I was in Barcelona, I could understand Right. When somebody was talking to me, I could understand. I couldn't complete my sentences in order to, uh, to answer back. Right. But, you know, I could make sense if I wanted to say something or to point something to somebody. Right. I believe I could make sense. So somebody was very polite with me and didn't want to make fun of me, you know. There you go. And now you take off. You, have, you signed a four-year deal at Barcelona, but you took off. I'm assuming Houston bought your rights out. That, that was yes. when you went to the NBA. Yes. Um, what... Was it ever, I mean, for an American guy growing up and you start playing basketball, it's always, NBA is always a dream. Was it ever, I mean, you're not even telling me that playing in the, in the Greek league or the Euro league was really a dream. It was something that just happened to you. I mean, I'm sure, the, when did the NBA become like, wow, I might be able to do this? Well, you know, there is, there is players that they say, you know, NBA is not for me. I wouldn't do it if it would come. And there is players, like you say, that they say, NBA is the wow thing. For me, it's the wow thing. It's like I've ever said, I always said it once I start playing uh, in a big league and playing in Euro League. I ever said that if I ever have the opportunity to go there, even for a year, to live this experience, you know, mm-hmm. it will be a no brainer. Right. It will be a, a no brainer for me. And that's what happened when I was in Barcelona. I had a great contract in Barcelona. I, had, I was in a, in a great environment. I was very happy being there, you know, and everything. Uh, but this this dream, you know, came knocking on the door, and I just couldn't re- couldn't refuse, you know. Like uh, it was my shot because you know you know how NBA is also like if you skip one one time the the chance you have, you might never get a second one. Yeah. So I, I didn't want to kick it away, you know. I wanted to give it a shot, give it a try, and you know see how this this uh, new world is, you know. Mm-hmm. What what. I mean, you're drafted. You're drafted by the Knicks, and you went to the typical NBA thing where your rights were traded to Portland, and then they went off to you. I mean, you you were you were kicked around America before you even stepped foot to to play yeah. to, to have a practice, you know. But and then you end up in Houston, and and what's the first thing you remember about humidity? <laughs> it was crazy. It's nuts, it isn't was... it? It was crazy. You know, the craziest thing, it was like, I was like boiling. Going into a building was like minus on a, on an air conditioning. Like your whole body was getting in shock. I was so like, honestly, when I got there, that was the first time I, I was like, man, what's going on with this weather? What's, what's wrong with the, these the guys? worst, the worst part is anywhere you go, you end up walking in and you, and they put it at like, at like 18 or 15 degrees Celsius and it's exactly. freezing and then you walk it's out crazy. and you just start sweating immediately. 
you, you start having a headache immediately, you know, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. because your body is in shock. Yeah. You know, the you glasses can't. fog up, your sunglasses everything. fog up, and everything. Everything. Your but family no, like, went. Your family went with you too, didn't they? Well, they they came visit a couple of times. I was by myself there, you know. Uh, it was it was it was amazing. Like to be honest with you, like even going to the states because it was my first time. Mm-hmm. You know, going to see all these buildings, the big, the big buildings, and then living there, the American life, uh, way of life, you know, the way they live, you know, and everything is way different from Europe and much more different than here in Greece, you know. Right. And uh, it was, it was all new for me. It was a, it was a big, uh, it was a big endless experience for me, you know, in everything, in life, in basketball, in everything. You, you had, I mean. Your season was a good season. You guys finished in the top. You guys went to the Western Conference Finals. You lost to, I mean, Steph Curry, Kevin Durant yeah. in the finals, which was, I, I guess everybody kind of expected was going to happen. You guys probably didn't think that was going to happen, but it was a, a great team. I mean, what what do you take out of that experience? It, it, I mean, that had to be an incredible experience. And not only do you show up from Europe into this, but you make it to the Western Conference Finals and you're playing with James Harden and, and you know, an amazing team. Well, I was lucky once more, you know, because the season I went there, the team made it all the way to the, to the Conference Finals. So I had the chance to leave the whole thing of it, you know, like... The only thing I had left was li- like go to the finals and win a ring. Right. That's the, the most you can get out of it. Uh, but uh, being there, you know, and uh, working out the way they work out and all the schedule, you know, you know how it is. Just the people don't, don't know how it is. Like there is a schedule about everything. It's not like they don't go day by day. The first day you get in, they see you, they measure you, they run you through all the tests and everything, and they make a plan for you, you know? Mm-hmm. This is what you got to do. This is what you got to fix. This is what you got to get strength on. Everything, everything. And uh, the most amazing and good thing for me in order to make you work is that over there, nobody will force you to work. Yeah. You know, they tell you, look, we have here is the coaches, here is the strength condition coaches, here is everybody. You know, as long as you want to work, they will be here and help you. You don't want to work, somebody else will do the job for you. Of course. This is this is how it is there, you know. And uh, I believe it's it's what gives uh, guys over there the, the, the extra knowledge, you know, to to do the, the step up and uh, the the bigger effort. This is when this is when I realize how much limits our body has, you know, yeah. and uh, how much you can push yourself, and he can take it, you know. The, after that, <clears throat> it wasn't a great experience. You you were traded to Denver. You got it. You got pretty much put into the business part of the game, which is the exactly which is the ugly part of the game. You know, you traded to Denver. You let go. You were released for financial purposes in September. They they brought you back in November. It's it's just so typical business wise. And then and then they let you go again, and and that was it. I, yeah. I, I, I you know I, I love to talk about people when they go through bad experiences like that. And and I don't really want to get into that with you. I want I have a, just three questions. One, what what was better than you ever expected? about your time in the NBA? Like before you went there, you expected like, boom, well, you bet, man, this is gonna be amazing. What was the, the, even better than what you expected when you got there? Well, uh, I, uh, the, the moment, the part of the season that I had a lot of play time, playing time in, in Houston was like, um, that, that was more than I expected, you know? Like I was averaging 20, 25 minutes uh, per game and you know it's like they started treating me like one of the Trevor Arizas 
one mm. of the James Harden because just because I was playing, I, I was playing a lot, you know, like I remember going to the practice and uh, they were like, okay, James, Dwight, Ariza, Mote Yunas and Papa Nicolau, you're out of practice. I was like, why? I want to work. No, 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 no. You average in 25 minutes, you gotta rest. Go take a massage, go do something, you know. Mm. I was like, no, I want to work. You can get some shots after the practice if you want. You cannot practice. You're permitted to practice. <laughs> yeah, like that. It was crazy. And, uh, but also, you know, the whole experience, like the buses to, to the hotel, you don't get, you don't get even to carry your luggage. You know, everything is coming out. <laughs> you go to the room, everything is there. You know, you go into the private plane, you walk to the side door, you straight go to the plane. No, no, uh, security check, no nothing. Right. It's, it's everything. It's everything, you know, like, Plus that I was in a new country that I, in every city that we were going, I had a lot of, a lot of things to, 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 to see and to explore, you know? What, what was, what was the, the worst part of the experience? For me, it wasn't other, really... Other a, than the humidity. Yeah. It, well, if I could, if I could say what's the worst part was like my injury. When mm -hmm. I got injured in Houston from uh, the sprain ankle, I, I was... Actually, I got one sprained knee playing the Timberwolves. I stayed out for uh, 15 days. Uh, until that moment, I was averaging 20 minutes, like, like I told you before. After this, uh, the trades happened and Corey Brewer and uh, Josh Smith came to the team. So I lost all my playing time. I was right at my, uh, at my position. And I'm saying this is a bad experience because I feel unlucky that I didn't have the chance to because I was injured, to be there and try to to hold on some of my minutes, you know, on my right. playing time and everything. Uh, but this is part of life. That's, that's part of the sport, you know, and there's nothing you can do about it. This is how, how, it's, how it is, you know? Yeah. The third question is, on a night-to-night -night basis, game to game, what's the difference between the NBA and the EuroLeague? Oh, you mean about the main the main differences on the on the game because everything the life the 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 games the the well I tell you like I believe in in Europe there the teams are more organized if I could say or more not no that's the wrong way to put it they the teams in Europe wanted a little bit to control everything on mm -hmm. your especially the day of the game routine, but some sometimes also the previous day, you know? Right. Uh, that helps some of the guys that doesn't bother, you know, or doesn't uh, do anything for other guys. Right. In the US, it's like, you're on your own. You can do whatever you want, you know? I, all, all I care is for you to sure. come and perform. Yes, to come and perform. I don't care if you want to go out and party until 7 a.m. the night before. As long as you can come in and do what you want, what I want you to do for me, do it. Mm -hmm. The moment you stop doing it, though, somebody else will come and, and replace you, you know? Exactly. It, that's, that was one of the main differences uh, that I, uh, I found there, you know? And especially, and of course, then, okay, the 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 speed of the game and all this stuff you know is is something I believe that everybody can see even from a, from a TV you know yeah. the 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 game the game is difficult also for a year a yearly person to understand because in the early every game is important every night exactly and, big, and in, in the NBA you might just say all right well you know we won last night we could take the night off and take a rest and, and big true and that's a strange feeling as a player because you don't actually say, okay, guys, let's take it easy, but everybody just kind of collectively just takes the night off. Exactly, exactly. That's a big difference, you know, between Europe and, and U.S. That's why uh, a lot of European guys, when they go there, you know, they're like, why? Why?" I, I had the same feeling, you know. I was talking with uh, Mote Yunas that he was there before me for a couple of years, and I was like, okay, what's going on? Why are we, why are we loosen up? Why are we <laughs> relaxing, you know? Why would we don't go to win this game? I mean, we play, for example... Uh, Phoenix Suns, I don't know, you know, like they're not that strong. Why we don't want to win this game? And then we're like, oh, okay, you know, this is how they do here. I say, okay. So, so you get released by Denver. It's got to be one of more. I don't know. I'm assuming one of the more difficult parts of your career up until this point to be released. But like you said, like you said earlier, 
you were going to hold Olympiacos' hand again someday. And, and at that time, the guy that I just did an interview with not too long ago, who just came out on, on the crossover, Coach, Coach Faropoulos. Faropoulos, yes. Um, goes searching for you. I mean, how long did it take you to say, I'll be there? Well, uh, it was a process, you know, like right before Christmas, Olympiacos was out in the, in the market for a player and they, they got in touch with me. But at that moment, I was still a player of, of Denver and I knew that my option for a guarantee contract was until uh, 14th of January, if I'm not mistaken. If this date was going by, then my contract was guaranteed. That means I stay throughout the whole season. Right. So they talked to us and uh, we talk. We talked to the assistant GM. I don't want to name any guys because our, our feel is right, you know. So we talked to the assistant GM of the Denver Nuggets, you know, at the time. We say, listen, we have this this offer. This team approaches us. Olympiacos approaches us and. We just want to know that what you're thinking, you know, because if you're thinking about waving Costas, you know, maybe it's better, you know, you let him go now so he doesn't lose also the other offer from from uh, this team and everything. He said, no, 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 we are very, very happy, you know, his work ethic, the way he does things and everything, you know, we're very happy from him and everything. I would say, okay, we said to Olympiacos, you know, sorry, but uh, we want to... Uh, Fight our, fight our chances, you know, here in the NBA. Thank you very much. We talk another time if, depending on the situation, you know. So the time goes by and then a couple of days before the 14th, you know, we are in, a, we are at Memphis. I remember we were at Memphis and we had a day off. We were playing the next day. I woke up in the morning because we, we fly in. I see like 15 calls from my coach, 15 calls from assistant GM, 15 <laughs> calls from my GM, from my uh, manager. I said, something is wrong. Something is wrong. I called them. They told me, you know, we got to wave you and blah, blah, blah. And from then on, you know, we started negotiating uh, with Europe because I had some other offers for 10 day contracts, you know, in the NBA. But like you said before, I didn't want to go any deeper into this business part of of the situation, you know, and of, of the league, because going for, for 10 days in one place and then another 10 days into another place, right. you're not stable, you know, and it wasn't something that I wanted to try and do at that moment, you know. And uh, then Olympiacos came, we, we had our conversations and everything. It was a, It was a quick process, you know, and all this thing was... Took, took a while, you know, for mm. people, you know, that they were expecting it. But between me and Olympiacos, it was uh, once we got in touch and we sit down and we start talking, it was done immediately, you know. Again, I, I didn't know until a couple of weeks ago that that Giannis and Coach Sferopoulos was the assistant coach in that game where you scored 18 points. Right, right. <laughs> I, you you know, Jessica in the final. Yeah, yeah, I, you know, he, I, I guess it was very tough for him because he was in Olympiacos also before, right. you know, and right. we talked, we talked tough. a lot about that in, in, in the crossover, the, the, um, I had to message him because he was so kind and after we did the interview, he, he asked for my number, which I was a little bit nervous about at first. And he sent me a message and told me how thankful he was and, and how great it came out and so forth and so on. And, and so I, I texted him last night when I was doing all my work and I said, coach, I said, I'm, I'm with Costas tomorrow. And I said, just give me a little something. Just give me a little something about him, you know? And, and he, he told me what I think everybody really knows about you, which is that on the floor, you're just one of those guys that does everything. You're, I mean, you, you, you'll, you'll defend anybody, you'll play any, any position. You're the, you're, the type of, you're the type of player that any coach loves. But what he did tell me was in two short messages, I'm going to play them for you. Uh, he told me in two short messages what a lot of people don't know. And, and I think it's what people need to know. I'm a player. I, thought, I hope you could hear it. Except uh, a great player is also a great character. And he's uh, a player that uh, he has, he's the glue in the locker room. He has uh, great, uh, 
how to say ability to connect all the teammates inside the locker room and you know to to make to make them feel like family. I was very proud and I was very happy to work with him all these years in Olympiacos. Coach, that, that's, thank you so much. Oh, that is perfect. Who's that? That was me. <laughs> and I think that that pretty much defines who you are from from everything that everybody's told me and everything that 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 I've heard about you and everything that I've seen. I mean, it, it's your ability to be that person in the locker room and be that important figure. Even at when you were at a young age, people told me that you were like that. Where, where does that, that leadership quality come from? Is it your dad being a cop? I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. I, I just, uh, what I do and I do it in my life, in every part of my life, you know, and not only basketball, is like I let, I let my, my heart guide me, you know? Like if my if my heart tells me that I have to speak or if I do if I have to do something or my instinct, I just do it. You know, I don't mm -hmm. have a second thought in anything. Um, it's it's great. You know, it's great to to listen to this um, all these nice words. You know, and everything from people and especially from coaches that you work with. You know, and everything. Uh, it flatters you a lot and it shows you that um, you really, you really, you know, uh, mean something, you know, to 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 ex co-workers and everything, you know, like you have, especially now that uh, you play this message from uh, Coach Veropoulos, uh, it's something that uh, Nikola Milotinov had said in uh, some previous interviews of him. Mm -hmm in some uh, medias, you know, and everything. These things makes me, make me, you know, like, uh, I don't know, like, uh, feel a little bit, you know, that, that I, I can, I can explain, I can express the words, you know, like what I'm, I eventually what I'm trying to say is like that when I was young, I used to have guys and people talking to me and guiding me. And also a lot of basketball players that they try to help me throughout my career, you know. So basically what I'm trying to do right now is like I'm trying to give back, you know. When I see young player uh, that they they want to hear or they want to listen or they might want to uh, need some guidance and everything, this is what I'm trying to do. Uh, if they're going to listen to it, if they're going to keep it or not, it's up to them. They, they, they have the criterion, you know, to to hold and to or release everything they hear and to follow or not to do everything that they've been told. Uh, look, look, that's, Costas, that's your, your inability it. to explain exactly how you feel when people talk the way they talk about you is answering the question. You know what I mean? The, the fact that you can't find the words to appreciate what people say about you pretty much answers the question itself, you know, and, and, that, and, it, and it, it just kind of indicates the type of person that you are. And, and I mean, that's, that's just the way it is, man. I mean, sometimes I look back and people come up to me still at 55 years old, like you're my idol. I'm like, I was your idol. Why would I be your idol? You, know I mean? it's, you, you need to find better idols than me, you know, but it is, it, it's a good feeling and it's something that's hard to explain. It's, a, it's amazing. It's you amazing. never expected that to happen thing. in your life, but. In, it's a great recognition for who you are, like a not only like a player, but as a person too. You know, yeah. when your peers and, talk about you, the people who play with you, play against you, and and the people who know you the best talk about you that way. It's 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 a special feeling. Yes. Let's try to finish up here if we can, because I know you probably got a busy day, especially with the with the doctor's appointment. But right. 2007, I talked to Coach about this, the, the bad luck that he had. He's gone to two Final Fours with Olympiak, was one with you, one without you. And both of them were at the home court of the of the, oh, the, yes, of the opponent team. Yes, and you went through that at Fenerbahce, and that was that was a a, a tough game, a, a game that was again probably a game you didn't really expect to be in or expect the battle, but you guys did. And 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 since then, I don't want to get too much into that game, but since then, Olympiakos is in your club has kind of been in a rebuilding mode so to speak. Exactly. So many exactly. things have happened in the, in the Greek domestic league. 
so many things are happening in the Euro League that you guys have changed the budget. You know, a lot of new players coming in year after year. A person that has so much time there invested, like you, Vasilis, and 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 Yorgos. What are you What are you feeling right now? What What's going on for you personally? I mean, are you are you are you excited about the future? Are you a part of this building project? Or, or what's going on in your mind personally? Well, well, um, I feel I really feel excited about where Olympiacos is heading heading right now because yes, we had two years that they were not the best for us. Um, a lot of changes, like you said, happen. Um, but you cannot just flip a switch and get back to where you used to be, you know? Yeah. Uh, this is the first season, I believe, of the of a process, you know, for us to rebuild and uh, get back into where Olympiacos used to be and where uh, we we want to have the team, you know, for, for, for our fans and for the club itself. And I believe... Um, that uh, this will not take long, you know, like may, I, I believe that next year we will be even stronger and maybe in a better position, you know, to 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 accomplish all our goals. Also last year, nothing is done yet, you know, like there is a lot of uh, a lot of games yet to still to go. We are not in the best position, but uh, as long as we're alive, you know, and as we're breathing, uh, we have to fight with our uh, with our chances and uh, do the best we can. That that's what Olympiacos has always done, no matter what the against is. against all odds. <laughs> uh, I think one of the biggest questions I, I, that I want to know, that I'm sure everybody else wants to know, what's it like for a young guy like you to come up with two examples like like Spanulis and Princesses? I mean, you can't help on a daily basis but to learn. And and become better. It's like even if you, even if you don't want to become a better player, if you go out and practice against these two guys every day, you have no other choice. It's not only it's not only the practice. It's uh it's the things that they do, you know, extra. It's not like the team practice. You know what I mean? What I mean is like when I was 21 years old and Billy was like uh, 28, 29 at the time. Uh, Finishing the practice and seeing Billy sitting on a court and keep shooting endlessly, you know, makes you think like, okay, if he does it, that he is who he is and he accomplishes what he accomplishes, what should I do, you know? Mm -hmm. So I had, in order to keep up with that, to come in the morning and shoot extra and plus stay after the practice and shoot extra, you know? They set the, the bar and the example, you know, uh, for every for every player, you know, on how things supposed to 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 go if you want to be successful, you know, and that's for for both of them, you know. Also, Yorgos is a really hard worker. He never stops uh, during the summer, uh, during the winter, goes to the gym, goes extra shots, everything, everything. They are the best example, I believe. Uh, also, the kids that they are now in Olympiacos in young ages that they could have, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's part of you, the luck that you've had over the years. <laughs> yes. It's, 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 you've been able yes. to learn from the best. I mean, it's like I said, well, one of my final questions in this part of the interview is, is one of the most important ones for me because it is something that you and I have in common. I always like, I always have, I always like having something in common with a 30 year old Euro League star. So I always try to put this into my interview. I'm an ambassador for one team. Yeah. One team is a, is, a, is, a, is a project that was developed back in 2012. As you know, it's a corporate social responsibility program that, that uses basketball to kind of create positive changes in people's lives that, that, that aren't as lucky as you or as I and, and a lot of other people. I've been with you in a lot of these events, and you're probably one of the most active players and well-known faces that, that this organization has, this, this one team has. The easiest question I have is why? Why is it so important to you? Why? Because uh, it doesn't take nothing, nothing, just an hour of your time, an hour of your life, you know? In order to give so much joy and so much feelings uh, and to know those, to all those kids, 
And what is most surprising is like when you are there during this hour, you realize at some point that it's not the feelings only that you give them, it's what you get back, you know? Because <laughs> every time, you, yes, because every time you go with these kids, you know, their hugs and their laugh and the, you know, every time you walk through the door, they see you and they open their eyes from joy and everything. They run towards you and just to hug you and to play with you and to show you their love. <laughs> this is something that fills you up below like a person. That's, that's what I've been getting from one team all those years and every single time, every single time. And that's why I keep doing it. That's why I'm happy for doing it. And that's why I don't want to stop doing it. Yeah, it's driving me crazy that with all this Corona and everything else that we haven't been able to do more events, you know, like we like we right. used to, and 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 it, it just I, I want to get back to it so badly, you know. I I, I miss those kids. I miss, like you said, and I, I'm going to be very honest, and 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 Abby, you know, Abby might kill me one day for saying this, but usually when I do these events, like a t couple hours before, I'm like, oh man, a one team event, all these kids, all this whatever, you know, it's like, oh god, I got to go do this for an hour, and like you said, it's like it fills me for like four or five days afterwards, you know, that like the hugs and the smiles and, and the ability to give these, these kids just the, and for me, they don't even know me. I'm just some old guy, you know what I mean? But, but I get, I think I get much more out of those events than those kids do. Maybe with you, you know, they get much more out of it, but it is what is even in, in English, it's not your first language. You explained it exactly the way I explained it all the time. It's just such a great feeling when you walk out of there and, and what it's, you can give back to those kids. It's amazing. And uh, we really got to congratulate EuroLeague for this initiative, you know, yeah. like doing that and uh, being yeah, I, I, I allowed begged, us to be part of I, that. I begged back in, I think when the Final Four <laughs> was here in Madrid in 2014, I begged. Um, Abby, I was like, please, please just let me be a part of this. Somehow find something for me. Just, you know, do whatever. I love, I love kids and I love to be able to give back to kids. So it, it, I'm, I'm just, I'm, it's, the, it's the proudest thing that I do outside of, you know, my jobs. But all right, my man, the interview part of this is all finished. And now it's the fun time. Part one of our interview, or our second part will be to get to know you a little bit better. It's a little bit of a test to see what kind of person you are and what kind of things that you like. So come on, let's get started. You have a free trip anywhere in the world that you can go on vacation or whatever. Where's your destination? Ooh, uh, I would say uh, Australia. Australia. Have you ever been there? I've been there, but I didn't have the chance to, to, enjoy to see, to enjoy right. it, yeah. Last movie you watched or series? Nowadays we watch a lot of series, so. Last series that I keep watching right now with my wife is Modern Family. Hilarious, <laughs> hilarious. It's one of my favorites. Amazing. But what, what season are you in? Uh, now we're at the eight, if I'm not oh, okay. mistaken. It doesn't yeah. get so good towards the end of the season, but the beginning, yeah. the, the first season beginning was incredible. amazing, man. You watch it in English, I assume, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Are you AJ. Sitting down in, what's that? AJ. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sophia Vergara is calling you. Hey, look at I until I until I married my wife, I was in love with Sophia Vergara. That's the only reason well, why I watched that show. I, I don't blame you. <laughs> you sit down at the table, you could order any meal in the world. Any meal and it's gonna be served to you. What what's your go-to meal? Go-to meal. Come on, what, what you gotta do? It's so hard. I will uh, be a Greek traditional guy and say gyros. Gyros, nice. To, to adver advertise a little bit, you know. There you go. Childhood idol. What's that? Your childhood idol. <sighs> childhood idol was not, not the one. It was two, actually. It was in basketball, of course. Uh, it, was, uh, it was Vasilopoulos. Because he was young age and he was playing Olympiacos, you know, and he was in young age and I could get sort of connected with him. And the second one was the Amadidis because uh, he was uh, from a city right next to the city that I grew up. Mm -hmm. So I could also feel the connection, you know, like, oh, look, he's from here and he made it. The other guy is young and he made it. Maybe I could make it one day. Those right. two guys were my, my idols. 
Tell me the one game that if you can go back in time and play again, that you would love to, you would love to go back. Same outcome. Eh? Same, same outcome. Yeah. With this, okay, 2012 then. All right, there you go. That, that's Easy. the first time I've heard that, but I like that answer. Really? Yeah, that's yeah, that's the first. Like usually everybody wants to go back and replay a game that they lost. No, 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 no. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that. Now, I mean, what? This is, you're, you're, we're going right into another answer of your question. Tell me your top three year league memories. Uh, that's obviously number one. Nah, obviously. Uh, and also the two Euro leagues, I would say, is number one and number two. Mm. Uh, number three, I would say, is the is the playoff series with uh, FS in 20, 2017. Because it was a really tough series. Both teams play very, very well, you know. That was, made a, a break. was the fifth game. You guys went to the fifth game. And... Yes, and uh, we lost the second game here and we won the fourth game right. there, you know, in order to come back for the fifth game. It was, it was very intense and very good fight. You're, you're, you're 30 and the way things are going in life recently, I know you're injured right now, but, but what are you going to do when it's all over? When, when you finally have to hang up the shoes and, and like all of a sudden this is a part of the past? You know, the smartest thing they say to do is like to keep keep doing and keep working and keep being involved with something that you've done for so many years because you are so, you know this, this project already. Uh, but I haven't figured out yet what it's gonna be and from where I'm gonna be serving this, this sport that, that we love, you know. All right. Now the hard part. You ready? Okay. <laughs> testing, testing your Euro League knowledge. I got five questions. Oh man, I'm the worst with that. Billy used to do that <laughs> all, all the time, them, and I'm the worst. All of them have a different, different, different level of difficulty. All right. The first okay. one's worth ten points, and the fifth one's worth fifty points. And we got 10, oh, 20, okay. 30, 40, 50. All right. That's I'm good. just gonna give you a heads up before you start. The average score is between 30 and 40, so you can't, you know, you'll be, you're going to be okay. Don't worry. But you, go. with one with one quick, good, easy question, you can take over first place. You ready? Okay. Question number one. Who is the current coach of Panathinaikos Opop Athens? Okay, Mr. Katas. There you go. Let's see, you got 10 points. See, it's not that difficult. Yeah. How many EuroLeague titles does Olympiakos have since the year 2000? Since the 2000? Two. 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 I'm going to tell you what, they didn't give me, they didn't give me the answer here. <laughs> well, first one was 1997, so after 2000, it's 2012, 2013. All right, I'm going to go. You better know that one, so I'm going to give you that. 20 <laughs> points. Number three. So now you're up to 30 points. I'm sorry. Let's go. In, you're, you're, you're getting there. You're, you're at the average almost. In how many year elite teams has Norris Cole, who's playing with Asvel now, have played in? Well, he played in Asvel. He played in Budusnost. Where did he play before that? I think it was one more. I would say three. It was Maccabi also. Damn, you got it, my man. Yeah. 60 points. I'm Look above average. I mean, <laughs> yes. Who ended in the top of the standings in the 2018-2019 regular season? 18-19? Top of the standings at the end of the regular season. The year 18-19 was the year like two seasons ago, right? I'm going to go by luck, you know, and I will say Madrid. Oh, you missed that one, Fenerbahce. I thought for sure you'd go with Fenerbahce. Ah, <laughs> oh, man. It, it was one of the two, though. So. All right, last question with 50 points. Let me see. You're sitting at 60 right now. So you got a chance to get the 110 here. Against which team did Olympiacos have its all-time point scoring record? Oh, man. And I think I wasn't here too, right? I can't give you any hints, man, because then people can get mad at me. Man, 
né? A... A don't got it. I would say... I'm trying to remember the teams. I think it's a team from... No, I don't want to say something. I don't want to embarrass myself. Uh, I would say... Ah, oh man. I would say... Oh, There's Montero. more pressure than sitting at that foul line with 10 seconds left in the Cheska game, man. Right, right. <laughs> uh, okay. I, I, I don't know. I would say Nanterre. Just no. a chance. That's... 113 against Union Olympia. Damn it. I would never find that. That was in 2007. Well, I wasn't even... I was in Irish back then. Okay. You were in Irish back then, yeah. So what'd you end up with? 100... What'd you end up with? What'd I say? 60, 60, 60. 30, 60? 60, 60. Yeah, 60 I want to be fair. 60 points. This, yeah, you it's were okay. close, man. You were close. Listen, my man, Costas, it, it's, I mean, first and foremost, stay healthy. I know you're hurt right now. Get better as, as quickly as you can. Uh, second, thank you so much for taking the time out to be to be part of the crossover with Joe R. Lucas. You guys, guys like you just make it a better product. You know, you, you, the, the way you're open, the way you're honest and, and, and everything about you. And of course, the most important thing is you're about to be a new daddy. So combining combining being a new daddy with basketball is one of the most difficult things you have experienced in your life, my man. So. That's what I hear. That's what I hear. Yeah. Good luck to you. Good luck to your wife. But again, you have a perfect example in your team. You got Spanulas has got like 36 exactly. kids. So, you know, it's exactly. no big deal. Good luck Amen. to you, my man. And, and Thank it's you. been a pleasure. Can't wait to see you in a one-team event sometime soon. Thank you very much for, uh, for the invitation. Thank you for everything. It's been really great and uh you 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 took me on a trip back on a, on a days you know and uh, it's amazing it's amazing thank you very much to you, you and me, to man. all the team anytime good luck to you man